me, Elena Mohan Daisha, Bajaj, and Zara Chavla are going to be proposing our project, Project Athena. Right. Sorry, there's some problem. I can't. Here we go. So this is just an overview of our presentation as well as what we're going to be essentially covering today. So before we actually get into the statistics, we want to talk about why we chose to do this project on a personal level. For me personally, now that I'm attending the Bear School, I have access to innumerable fantastic opportunities that allow me to really hone my skills as well as um, practice my extracurriculars. But before this, I used to go to another school that did not have the same opportunities. And I often um, noticed that even our like extracurricular lessons were often taken over by our curriculum teachers in order to teach us, um, in order to be able to teach us something and we always missed out. So now talking about the actual problem. So the problem is that low income students in India do not have access to a well-rounded education. And with most Indian schools not putting enough emphasis on extracurriculars, especially sports, this not only ends up hampering the holistic development, but they also end up lacking essential skills like teamwork, which reduces their employability in the future. So with India now, the second, pro the second problem we're aiming to tackle is that India is one of the most unsafe countries. Every day we have news popping up about people being raped and people falling victim to domestic violence. And we really wanted to be able to tackle this problem, even if it's on a small scale. So these are just some statistics that we have found related to our project. So 32,500 cases of rape were registered in 27 with 90 a day and about 1.26 lakh cases of domestic violence happen every day and this is just a statement by a teacher at an MCD, MCD school in East Delhi Bahargan to just show you how there are not enough facilities for extracurriculars in government schools. So what is causing the problem? So we've just highlighted exactly what is happening and why this is happening. So this is just a few of the things. And on top of this, it's this mindset that um, academics is much more important than sports and not even a little importance is given to a sport. So who does the problem impact? It impacts low income students, especially. And on top of that, it how it hampers their ability to be able to hone these skills that will really be able to help them in the future. So now our mission is to help students hone essential things to extracurricular activities with a special emphasis on sports as well as self-defense. We want empowerment of young girls and we all want to be able to help them defend themselves in vulnerable situations. And we want to ensure well-rounded development of low-income students as well as get them better sports equipment. These are just some of the things that, that holistic education and if we place importance on sport, this is what it can help with. So now talking about the SDGs that our project is aligned with. So there are three main ones. So first we have quality education and by really offering them a well-rounded education, we're sort of ensuring that they get a really good quality education that's gonna be able to help them in the future. Talking about gender equality, where what we're really doing here is we're providing young girls with self-defense training that's really gonna empower them as well as further be able to give them the self-confidence. And um, that will really be able to bridge the gap between the two genders and promote gender equality. And talking about reduced inequalities, uh, one, as you will notice it further on, that one prong of our plan really focuses on bridging the gap between more privileged schools and underprivileged schools that will really be able to reduce inequalities. So this is our four main prongs of our proposed solution, which we're gonna talk about further. So the first one is tutor training, which is actually our ongoing project. Um, so we tutor in a wide variety of subjects with major emphasis on these four, which are entrepreneurship, music, sports and self-defense uh, and public speaking. And this is just an overview of why we chose these particular subjects. And this is about our previous successes and our mentors. We have been teaching all these subjects online to children all across India from various backgrounds. Our mentors are also a wide range of high school students from all across the world who are highly skilled in the subject they are teaching. And these are just some of their accomplishments. So 
during COVID times, we have been limited to only mentoring online, and therefore we can only mentor students who have access to devices. After the pandemic sort of um, blows over in layman's terms, we will start offering um, classes to students of a wider range of backgrounds. And this is just uh, an overview of the sign up process, which consists of filling the form, pairing it with the mentor, confirming it with the mentor, and then the first class. And this is another component of our solution, which is care packages. So this is just about them. So one of our goals is to provide holistic care education care packages to the children of India. These care packages will include open-ended items such as hula hoops, tennis balls, playing cards, Rubik's cubes, and pamphlets on self-defense and sport techniques. These will, these are just some of the advantages such as increasing flexibility, improving memory and improving problem solving skills. So this is just uh, some of the finances of the care packages and the average cost. So the average cost of a care package in its whole will be 550 rupees. This is not including the distribution costs. So now I'm talking about the second prong, which is self-defense. So just talking about the importance and outcomes, I've been talking about empowerment all this while. So we have that. We have reduced cases of violence because girls will be able to defend themselves. Less fear of attackers. I know normally when we're going out in the night, especially girls, our parents tell us that, you know, don't go out, you know, it's really scary out there. But now that we learn these skills, we're going to feel confident enough to be able to you know, not fear our attackers. And it also teaches important values. For example, karate teaches you discipline and other really important values that will really help you. So now talking about the sports equipment and infrastructure. So we know that we're going to be doing tutoring and we're going to try to help them. But what we really want to do is have a long lasting impact. So in order to do this, we want to really buy some sports equipment that they can use themselves, as well as start up a mutually beneficial program to which children from more privileged schools who are skilled at these sports. Um, and um, they're chosen because, and the reason we've chosen these three sports is because they're really popular as well as inexpensive. And they can teach the same every week to these underprivileged schools in return for community service hours because we believe that we're incentivizing them to be able to teach these as well. So um, yeah, so the school these students go to will be able to affiliate themselves with the government schools and send their students there based on their availability and interests. So stages of implementation. So we, before we, because we've already been doing this project, we have implement, implemented a lot of these um, stages. So the first was hiring qualified tutors or mentors, which we have an extensive application process and an interview before we hire our mentors. Then reaching out to low-income students, we reached out to about 20 government schools and that's how we got 85 plus mentees who we are tutoring right now. We have started online tutoring. We have been doing it since June and we have collected lot of sports equipment from a donation drive that we held last month. Now further implementation, we want to send out ap more applications to our schools for people who are skilled at self-defense, mostly boxing and karate. We want hold interviews to assess teaching abilities again, and this time in person, then designing a curriculum and a sample teaching plan, then reaching out to government schools and gathering a group of students to teach. And then we're gonna be holding weekly sessions and teaching basal ma bas basic martial arts, as well as a lot of other extracurriculars. So this is just a brief timeline. So we've been doing tutoring since June 2020, as mentioned here. So we want to start by expanding the tutoring we're already doing. Then we want to focus on distributing these care packages, which is like our best um, way of doing this right now due to the pandemic restrictions. Then third is starting teaching self-defense classes in schools when the pandemic restrictions open up. And fourth is actually having a long lasting impact with providing them equipment and infrastructure. So these are just our milestones that are outlined. So acquiring funding for the care packages, providing 10 schools with sports equipment and partnering up with school to start self-defense classes. So the impact we hope to have is that not we really hope that people from low income and underprivileged students will really be able to increase their employability by honing these essential skills and really have a platform to hone their skills and really be able to improve on the talents that they already have. So these are just the finances for one school of the sports equipment and infrastructure. So yoga requires minimum equipment, football nets and balls. Um, these are just, and cricket bat, ball and stumps and a boxing bag for martial arts. 
Then uh, this is just our financial plan. So how much startup capital is needed and how will we spend it? We will first need 6,000 rupees to start up our project, 5,500 for 10 care packages and 500 for delivery costs. We are starting with a small number because we also have a comparison group and it is, it is difficult to compare with larger groups and with different projects without adequate funding. What are the sources from which this will be acquired? We will primarily source the startup capital from crowdfunding and other public donations. And how will we fund scaling the organization? We will apply for grants such as government grants, as well as contact businesses for CSR projects, along with fundraisers.